Hello and welcome. In this workshop, we will demonstrate how to use the ANSYS Fluent Meshing Watertight Geometry Workflow to generate a simulation ready mesh for studying the fluid flow through a catalytic converter. While generating the volume mesh, we will see how to use the region based sizing method to locally refine the mesh. We will also see how to rename the zones using Manage Zones task after generating the volume mesh. With the intention to prevent the backflow while simulating, we will see how to extend the outlet boundary using an additional task in the workflow. Finally, we will demonstrate how to switch to the solution mode not only using the GUI but also using a TUI command. Without further delay, let's get started. Launch ANSYS Fluent in Meshing Mode For this demonstration, double precision is enabled and four processes are engaged for meshing. Once Fluent Meshing launches, select Watertight Geometry Workflow. In the Import Geometry task, leave all the settings to default and load the provided geometry file. The model we have here is that of a catalytic converter which is an exhaust emission control device and is usually used with the IC engines. The geometry consists of a solid domain of the catalytic converter and three fluid domains that is the inlet cone region, the porous region which is a catalyst and the outlet cone region. Let's start with the workflow. We will not be adding any local sizing. Next. In the generate the surface mesh task, keep the minimum size to the default value and set the maximum size to 4mm which is approximately 10% of the inlet diameter. To ensure the presence of appropriate number of cells in the thin geometrical features of the solid domain, set the cells per gap to 2. Note that the solid domain of the imported geometry does not have labels or named selections defined at the CAD level and hence it is considered as a single entity as can be seen here. Therefore, we will have to separate the zones based on angles while generating the surface mesh. This is necessary for extruding the solid boundary along with the fluid boundary after generating the volume mesh. Therefore, set this option to yes and keep the separation angle to its default value. Leave rest of the inputs to their default settings and click on generate the surface mesh. Once the surface mesh has been generated, notice how we have two cells along the thickness of the solid body compared to one when cells per gap is set to one. In the described geometry task, select the third option for the geometry type as the imported geometry contains both the solid and the fluid regions. Keep the will you cap openings and extract fluid regions option to no and set change all fluid fluid boundary type from wall to internal option to yes. This will allow the fluid to flow across the different fluid regions. As we have already performed shear topology operation at the CAD level, we will set this option to no. Click on describe geometry button to execute the task. In the update boundaries task, ensure that appropriate boundary type for the boundaries is set and then move to the next task that is create regions. As we have three fluid regions, set the estimated number of fluid regions to three and click on create regions button. Note that Fluent has detected only two fluid regions as can be seen here in the list and as reported in the console window. However, as we can manually update the name and the type of regions in the update regions task, set the region type to fluid for the porous underscore region. Next, in the add boundary layers task, add three layers on the walls of the fluid regions and one layer on the solid fluid interface of the solid region, keeping rest of the inputs to their default settings. Adding boundary layer in the solid region will help to accurately predict the temperature gradients 
while performing the CHT analysis. Finally, we will move to the generate the volume mesh task. In this case of catalytic converter, the flow is wall bounded and directional. It is physically sensible to use polyhex core mesh wherein the hex cells of the resulting mesh will be aligned with the flow direction. Set the fill width method to polyhex core. Also set the merge back the separated boundary zones option to no to facilitate the extension of the solid boundary along with the fluid boundary after generating the volume mesh. Make sure that the mesh solid regions option is ticked before executing the task. Hit the generate the volume mesh button to create the volume mesh. Once the mesh is generated, observe the cut section. For accurate modeling of the porous media while simulating, it is generally advised to refine the mesh in that region. Hence, we will use region based sizing method to locally refine the mesh in the porous region. Click on revert and edit to make the modifications. Now change the sizing method from global to region based. As soon as the sizing method is set to region based, a table will pop up in the properties section which is populated with the region names and the corresponding max cell lengths. Here the user can change the max cell length as needed. To refine the mesh, set the max cell length to 3mm for the porous region. Note that the solver automatically updates the max cell length value closest to the user specified value that reflects the actual max size as per the octree meshing scheme. Click on update button to generate the volume mesh. Once the mesh is generated, observe the cut section. As expected, the mesh is now refined in the porous region. The mesh has a total of approximately 0.34 million cells with a mesh quality of 0.2 which is well above the recommended value of 0.1. It is always a good practice to maintain the zone names according to the zone type. If not named earlier, we can still do it after generating the volume mesh with the help of the manage zones task in the workflow. Right click on the generate the volume mesh task, select insert new task and click on manage zones. Select the in underscore region cell zone, set the operation to rename and enter the new name. Click on manage zone button to execute the operation. Similarly, rename the out underscore region and porous underscore region cell zones. The phase zones can also be renamed in a similar way, but let's skip that for brevity. Now we will extend the outlet boundary, which can prevent possible backflow during simulation. Add the extrude volume mesh task in the workflow. Select outlet boundary for both solid and fluid domain using the graphics window. Set the total height to 100 mm with the number of layers as 20 and the growth rate as 1.1. Once the task is executed, notice how the surface mesh of the original outlet boundary is swept in the normal direction to create an extension. Once the mesh is simulation ready, it can be transferred to the ANSYS Fluent Fluid Flow Solver. Simply click on switch to solution button located on the top left corner of the ribbon to transfer the mesh to the ANSYS Fluent Solver. Alternatively, user can also invoke the switch to solution mode text command in the console window as shown here. That brings us to the end of this workshop.